Welcome to Press Row. The members of the press seated in a row today are the same that they always are. Aaron Matthews, Ty Walker, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. And guys, big football game this Friday night here in Lima. Lima senior hosting Finley. Finish this sentence for me. This is the biggest Spartan football game since... 2013, Mike Fell's first win. <laughs> I, I think you got to go back a little okay. farther than All that. Right. Uh, I, I think, in retrospect. Yeah, well, okay. that was big. And uh, I, I don't recall if Aaron was around then or not, but this is the biggest game in Lima for the Spartans in the regular season now since 1997. Maslin came to town. Yep. They brought the Tiger with them. That was the circus. And the Spartans <laughs> were the defending state champions. The only team that had beaten them in 96 was Maslin in Stark County. Uh, that There's been nothing else close to that since. I was in town, and you and I were working together at that point. Okay. Too. And I, I remember that. In fact, there is a documentary about that season with Maslin. It's called, I think it's like We Are Maslin or something. Oh, on yeah, Netflix. that was that and year. They, and they showed a shot of Lima Stadium. The yep. Tiger and all that other stuff as well. So I remember that vividly. I think uh, otherwise, if you're uh, a little older and can remember the mid-80s, uh, Cincinnati Molar came to town, and it was so big they had to add seats on the end zone <laughs> at Lima Stadium. And, uh, you know, unofficially there was eight or 9,000 people in there uh, when they played Molar. That may have been a playoff game. Might not have been, but uh, I think easily it's the biggest game since Maslin. Yeah, I mean, the new Spartan Stadium is said to hold about 2,000 folks. They're expecting that full capacity for Friday's game. And, you know, getting away from all the hype, undefeated against undefeated, the two teams, it's going to be an interesting matchup for the two teams. You know, Finley this year, they've gone to a more of the up-tempo offense, the Kenton spread type offense, which is right in Lima Senior's wheelhouse, same type of thing that Lima Senior likes to do. I know a lot of folks are saying both these teams are 5-0, and but you look at the records that of the teams they have beaten, at this point in the season, you're five weeks in, you can tell these are two teams. Finley much, much improved from last year. Lima Senior much improved from last year as well. Without a doubt. And when you look at what's going on right now with both of these teams, Finley was, what, 2-8 and a year ago, guys? Mm -hmm. They were not a very yeah. good program. And Picked to finish second to last in the preseason yes. track. Coaches hold. That's right. And then look at Lima Senior now. And guys, theoretically, Lima Senior needs one win to clinch a playoff berth. If they get that win this week, they're going to get Buku Division one point. Right now, they would be home against Xenia if the playoffs started this week. Spartans just got to come out, play their game, and win, win or lose, you know they're going to give everything they got. And that place is going to be packed. In fact, I think we'll see people – up on the uh, up on the hill, on the <laughs> south end of the stadium, tailgating, having fun. Might have some lawn chairs there. Get your popcorn ready. And I know a lot of people are going to look back at the St. Francis victory and say, yeah, Lima Sr. pulled away in the second half when Lamar Carswell was out of the game. But the fact of the matter was Spartans were beginning to pull away while Carswell was still in the game. Yeah, you know what else? You know why Lamar Carswell was out of the game? A, because he runs every play. Yeah. But B, the Spartans knocked him out of the game. And that's why they're going to beat Finley. This Lima team hits. It might be up and down, up and down, up and down, but eventually the Spartans are hitting people. And what happens is that up and down stops, and it's just all Lima. That's what's going to happen against Finley. Too. Yeah, there's certainly a buzz in the city. I was at practice yesterday talking with Coach Fell and, and Janiel Lyles, and, and they're pumped up about this game. While they were finishing their running, they were, they were yelling, beat Finley as they were running. And whoa, 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 they said Finley? They did say Finley. I thought they were only referring to them as that team up north. Oh, no, let's they, not go that far. <laughs> they said Finley, and they're excited about this game, just as they should be, like everyone else. And this, they could clinch their first winning season since 2000, so that makes it a big game as it is. We, they're going to get their sixth win, whether it comes against Finley or not. I think it's safe to say they're not going to finish 0-5, but I still think that's a, that's a big morale boost for the program and, and the city itself. So I think this win, with, you know, I think the Spartans win as well, but I think with this win, what that will do, I mean, we've already seen this program soar every week, that momentum build and build and build. Guys, they, they knock off Finley convincingly. Oh boy, we talk about momentum on the Spartan side. They might just steamroll everybody from here on out. Who knows? Well, that's one of just a handful of great games that we have coming up this Friday. That's a candidate for game of the week easily, but there are some other ones. What other games do you think could live up to the hype that they bring to the table? Well, Spencerville yeah. LCC. I think, I think that's clearly the, the next best game, uh, if not an equal game, just uh, with smaller schools. Uh, you know, I think Spencerville, this is – 
this is a hurdle for them to get over if it is. they, they want to take that next step and become a uh, they've made the playoffs a, a few years back you got to go back maybe eight years oh but, six is when they made yeah it. Mm -hmm. so uh, this is a huge game for spencerville and uh, psychologically i think on many levels it's a big game for spencerville i think because lcc had constantly been that team along with ada those back-to-back -back eight and two years guys yeah. those two losses were lcc and Ada three straight years in a row. I mean, it actually goes back more than that. They dismantle Ada with ease this year, back right. in week two, 42 nothing. And two years ago, when LCC went to Spencerville, it took a come from behind fourth quarter pick six from Darius West, and then another pick late that absolutely sealed the game for the Thunderbirds. But, uh, you know, that was then, this is now. This Spencerville team is as sharp offensively and as fluid offensively as far as. They get to the line. They're very cohesive. Everybody knows what every other person is doing. They don't get in each other's ways. They don't make very many mistakes on offense. But, boy, this is going to be a good one. This could be knockdown drag. This could be the knockdown drag out game tonight. My Allen County-centric friends, you're overlooking the bigger game than LCC and Spencerville. Go to Hancock County, and you will find 5-0 Liberty Benton traveling to 5-0 Arlington. These are two programs that have become very familiar with the running clock this year. Arlington had 55 first-half points a week ago. Liberty Benton had 35 in the first half, and they just rolled right through that second half. Two teams undefeated. It is a conference game. They're both in the Blanchard division of the BVC. Arlington, to me, is the second best team in Division 7 behind Marion Local. They might be a little bit better than Marion Local. I hope they meet up in the postseason so we can see. Liberty Benton, certainly highly regarded in Division 5. That's the game I'm really looking forward to after Finley Lima Senior. I would say that one is, that's number three on my list, to be perfectly honest with you, Mark. It's just, you're, you know, we've seen Arlington evolve. We've seen Liberty Benton maintain from being a team that went to the state championship game a few years ago to, you know, being able to maintain that you know presence with the exception of one year that they went five and five they've been in the playoffs they've been consistent and tim nichols has done an outstanding job as head coach at liberty benton and that game right there if arlington wins talk about buku computer points yep. as well that they'll get because liberty benton's a division five program yep. that might lock them in one two regardless of how things play out the rest of the year also a marquee game in the wbl or the marquee game in the western buckeye ken no g you have another great game in the NWC in Jefferson Crestview. And then also, can't forget about the Mac, Anna versus Marion Local. That could be a good game as well. I want to mention Jefferson Crestview for just a minute, guys, having seen Jefferson last week. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are fans of old school Smash Mouth <laughs> football, this Jefferson team is fun to watch. They run a high tempo wing tee where they come out of the huddle, they line up, they go. Now, they're going to be without Jay Stockwell the rest of the season. He suffered a neck injury. Um, it's some ligament damage in his neck, and he's going to be out for the year, but he should be able to play basketball. But their main running back, Hunter Binkley, is out as well. He also got hurt uh, in the LCC game this past Friday night also. If you know they get him back in the next couple weeks, and Kurt Wollenhop can you know do a good job of quarterback managing the game, for uh, Coach Chris Summers in the offense of Jefferson. That game might be a little bit closer than some are saying right now because people think, oh, those two are out, Crestview should roll. Not so well, fast. Well, Crestview struggled the last couple yes, weeks. Yes, and they're, out, they're without Oliver, too. Yes, Malcolm Oliver has not played the last couple weeks for the Crestview Knights. As they struggled to beat Bluffton, struggled to beat Allen East, needed to come back fourth quarter, both of those games to get victories. The Knights' offense right, right now is pretty much snapping to the quarterback, Preston Zaleski, and let him run. He is close to 1,000 yards already as a running quarterback. Crestview, they've learned how to win the last couple of weeks when they haven't had their top players in. It's going to be an interesting matchup because of the injury situations on both teams. Absolutely. And it worked for them against Allen East. They pulled out that tight win. But Crestview, Spencerville, Jefferson, they're all undefeated right now in the NWC. Think we'll have an outright winner, or are we going to have to share a title in that conference? We had tried champions last still. year. We had tried champions last yeah. year. We might have them again this year. Yep, you've got the matchup in, you know, this week with Crestview. And Jefferson, that's going to ping one. Uh, LCC, or not LCC, excuse me, but Spencerville has uh, Crestview in week eight, and if I eight, remember right. 10, and then right. week 10, Saturday night special with Jefferson and Spencerville. So yep. who knows? We'll see. Well, you know, the fewer teams you have in the league, the better chance there is of some kind of co or tri championship. So they only play seven league right. games. So uh, there's certainly a good chance of a try. Well, Jefferson gets. 
Spencerville at home and then Crestview on the road while Crestview has both those teams come to their place. We'll see if that factors in at all. But let's turn our attention now to the NFL and Bengals at New England Monday night. Or is it Monday night? Sunday, Sunday night. night. Sunday, Sunday night. night. And uh, Bengals have looked really good through the first quarter of the season. And playing against a New England team that's kind of down, just got beaten up by the Chiefs. I know Aaron's smiling about that. <laughs> Is the Belichick the only thing uglier than the Patriots' performance? Don't you the say Chiefs? those all red uniforms? Oh yes, those oh, all I'm red uniforms. Them. Oh, I'm loving them. They're blood clots. Them. They are undefeated in the all reds. Keep wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Tom Brady had some interesting things to say on, on Wednesday. Oh where yes, he did. He, he basically said this Patriot offense isn't what we're used to. I, I think there is probably some serious questions about whether or not New England is still at the top of the AFC as they've been for a decade, more than a decade. Having watched that game and watched the New England offense or lack thereof, the biggest discord to me, if I was a Patriots fan, was their offensive coordinator, Josh McDaniels, had the look on his face. Now, it was strictly body language from you know sitting there watching it at home. He looked absolutely disinterested in that game. And granted, you know, once they pulled Tom Brady, they put Jimmy Garofalo in, so did Brady because you know he knew they've had their butts handed to him game is over and it's out of hand but I don't know I've got to think there's some sort of disconnect going on you know I think for one of the few times New England really miscalculated when they got rid of a veteran Logan Mankins off that old line their offensive line is really struggling Brady's got to throw one and two step drops just to keep from getting his head torn off they don't have any real elusive receiver big time top shelf receiver Gronk is not the Gronk of old this team really offensively is very pedestrian and I don't know if this is the end of an era because they could retool quickly and come back for another year. But this edition of the New England Patriots, I think, is not making the playoffs. Wes Walker will be a free agent again at the end of this year, too. He'll have three more concussions by then. Probably. <laughs> yeah, it should be interesting to see how that turns out. Bengals, big game Sunday night. Finish up with some Major League Baseball. Great wild card game on Tuesday night between the Royals and the A's. Uh, Kansas City just bought it again. <laughs> <laughs> they used seven stolen bases, which tied a Major League Baseball record, and they bunted their way to an eventual 12-inning victory. But we're going to talk about the Reds and the Indians. What do the Reds and Indians need to do to get to at least a wild card game and get, get into the playoffs in 2015? Well, you know, it, it's so difficult to talk about the Reds because there are so many what ifs from injury yeah. and you got to figure if they get all their guys back and they perform at their normal levels then they they still need another credible bat in their lineup there's no question about that obviously it's going to be in left field the real decision is the stuff we don't know is what do the brass in cincinnati think about their three or four pitchers that have one year left with them before heading to free agency that decision will be key. Do they want to keep Latos? Do they want to keep Cueto? That will be the linchpin for what they do moving forward. Meanwhile, the Indians overachieved once again, got in the pennant race, the wild card race to the last weekend of the season. I think Cleveland's in a difficult position because they can't keep doing what they've been doing. If they do, they'll just continue to be in the hunt but not really contending. You, you wonder, is Nick Swisher done? He certainly did not perform as they wanted to this year, shut him down in uh, what was it, mid-August, and finally said he, he was f- finished for the year. I, I think the Indians are going to take a long look at trying to re-sign Victor Martinez as he'll be a free agent. Tigers certainly are going to be very interested in keeping Victor Martinez as well. I don't know if Victor is the only answer for the Cleveland Indians, but I think that might be an important piece of the puzzle for the Indians. You mentioned Victor, and I, you know, as much as I want to see him stay a Detroit Tiger, he'll finish his career at Cleveland Indian. There's no doubt about that in my mind, and he still – has you know residency in Cleveland it's still a big part of his family as well and he's revered in that community but I also think you know the Indians got to see what they've got you know what are they going to do pitching wise as far as Carlos Carrasco finished strong um, Tomlin I think will probably go bye-bye if you know if they or you know they relegate him into the bullpen but Corey Kluber showed me this year that they do have somebody who could be a bona fide ace but haven't we said that about Ubaldo Jimenez, Justin Masterson? So what you're saying is Corey Kluber is going to be traded to the Cardinals in about a year and a half? Yeah, probably. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. But um, let me tell you a little something about having a team back-to-back-to-back-to-back Central Division champions. It's, hopefully they don't dribble down their leg in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, hey, I thought the A's were already in the ALCS back on August Yeah, when they 1st. traded for uh, July 4th. It was July 4th. 
When they, when they got, made the trade for Lester. Well, when they so made they the trade for Samarja. Samarja was July 4th. Yeah. Lester was right. trade Lester deadline. was the trade deadline. They lost it when they traded away Cespedes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, they got one playoff game out of it. One playoff game yeah. out of it. It was a playoff game. Yeah, it was. I, Guys, my first Major League Baseball game was in Kansas City. I was. We had just moved there as a summer between my first and second grade year. So the, my dad being a minister, that was the fir- his first church. We were an hour from Kansas City. So watching that stadium... Rocking. It was cool. It was so awesome. And it took me back to those first Major League Baseball games that I saw. The first time I was there, it was Cal Ripken. You know, then the second game that Bo Jackson had in the majors. <laughs> it was so cool. Even though the place has been renovated, it looks incredible. It was so cool to see Kansas City rocking like it was last night and not be next door at Arrowhead Stadium. Well, now they're on to the DS. And, and just a quick note to finish up on the Reds. You talked about the starters. I think their bullpen really could use a retooling as yeah. well. They were, they were one of the worst, especially in the second well, half I mean, of the season. Well, the bullpen season. got hammered with injuries. Yeah, in, it's a lot easier, training. much easier to retool your middle relief because mm-hmm. you don't have to spend much money. Those guys and you are get a dime guys, a dozen. Yeah. Right. They're a dime a dozen. Usually what happens is they'll have a great year and then tank. Yep. That's why bullpens are so fluctuating. Yeah. And Broxton got traded to Milwaukee. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but if they, they could still build a bridge. Chapman. Yeah, if they could build a bridge to Chapman, I think they would win at least 10 to 15 more games. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Press Row. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy your football Fridays and the rest of your sports weekend. We'll see you next time.